You know, deep water fishing in the summer is something we'd all like to get a little bit better at. In this show, we're gonna talk about all facets of deep water fishing, from electronics to different baits and techniques that we can catch those fish a little bit better. Thanks for joining us. This is Fishing and Hunting Texas. From Mexico to Louisiana, the Red River down to the Laguna Madre, Texas is one big playground. Join us as we take you on some of the best outdoor adventures the Lone Star State has to offer. There he is. This is Fishing and Hunting Texas. To put our boat in the water, I always get asked, how do you set up your boat? Where do you keep your tackle? What do you got in your boat? I'm gonna tell you just real quickly what I run in my Ranger Z520L. First of all, in the back compartment, I've actually gone to lithiums this year, lithium pros. I got two 12s and two 36s. That runs the boat all day long. I got no problems there at all. In this box right here, I keep soft plastics. You see, I got my Rage Crawls, my Rage Swimmers, my Ochos, all different kinds of soft plastics. In this compartment over here, this is mainly kind of my junk compartment. I've got tools, ropes, anything I might need just to get me by. Obviously, the live wells are here come up here to the console i run a garmin 86 16 so it's a 16 inch screen big giant screen bass boat technologies mount on it where it's sitting right there i can really see it well let's go up front it's got an ice chest here ice in it right there middle compartment's the most important one to me that's where i keep most of my tackle soft plastics back there hard baits up here i've got this compartment right here it's got just a bunch of tackle in it. I've got some hats, a little bit of food, life jackets and different uh, rain suits and kind of stuff. I keep rods over here. And then up to the front, Garmin trolling motor. I've got my two screens up front, 10 inch, 8610 running the pan optics, 8612 running just standard uh, mapping and sonar. And then I've got a hydrowave. That's basically how I set my boat up. Hey, I wanna to talk to you just a little bit about how I set up my electronics not just for summer fishing, but for every kind of fishing. And I may adjust a little bit when it gets into the summer or winter or spring or fall, but for the most part, this is the way I like to run it. I've got a 16 inch screen. Now, if you've just got a 10 inch screen, I still probably would run it this way. Some guys like two different graphs. They might have two 12s. If, if so, I might run it just a little bit differently, but I've got four banks showing right here. When you look at this, I've got mapping, and I've got mapping really big because mapping is important to me. And then I've got side view. Well, I've got side view really big because I wanna be able to see as much detail as I can see out to the side. Then I've got traditional sonar and clear view on top of each other. They're both fairly small on my screens. And all of my different things, like my voltage and the time and the water temperature, all are sitting on that screen. I like it this way because I don't need to see these two for a long period of time. I just need to see those for a short period of time. Now, when you get out there and you start graphing and you start seeing fish, see the thing about it is, is a lake that's got a lot of bass, those bass may be somewhat, and say they're offshore and you're graphing them, those lakes also got a lot of fish. So what do bass look like? Well, for your different graph, you're gonna have to kind of figure that out. But one thing I can tell you is, is if you see a real uniform school, something like what you think what you see in saltwater, those typically aren't bass. It's either a big school of shad, it might be big shad, like big gizzard shad, it could be crappie, it could be white bass, but they're not bass. Bass typically are not real uniform in the school. I'll show you, we'll, we'll flash up a, a screen that are definitely bass, and I caught a bunch of bass out of this school. That is what sometimes bass look like. And so you've got to figure that out for your graph. This is how I like setting up my sonar. You've got to get out there and just spend some time in deep water to really know what you're looking at. Stay tuned. Fishing and Hunting Texas will be right back. We know if you found one crappie, you may have found a thousand. We know the joy of getting your boots back in the mud. We know the journey can be more rewarding than the destination. We know the great outdoors. We love the great outdoors. Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. 
Stop by today for huge savings on the gear you need and the brand you trust. Plus, free two-day shipping at BassPro.com and Cabela's.com. Fishing and Hunting Texas is brought to you by Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Your adventure starts here. Ranger Boats, still building legends one at a time. And by Garmin, fight your fish, not your fish finder. You know, deep diving crankbait is probably one of my very favorite ways to fish offshore. Whether I'm searching or trying to get a big bite or just catching a lot of fish. A deep diving crankbait can catch a ton of them, but the thing about it is, when you're throwing these big Strike King XD baits, you need the right rod and reel and line set up. If you've got everything right, it's a lot easier on your arm, your shoulder, you can cast it farther, and you can actually pull the bait down without as much stress on you. And so I'm gonna just tell you a little bit about kind of my setup and what I do. First of all, I use a Bass Pro Shops cranking stick. You can see it says cranking stick right there. The, the cranking stick is, it's got a bunch of different sizes and a bunch of different actions. It just depends on the bait, on how, on exactly which rod I'm gonna throw. If I'm, this, this bait right here is a Strike King 6XD. If I'm gonna throw a 6XD, I would either throw a 7.6, which is typically what I would throw, probably a little bit longer than what I used to throw but the, it's a fairly heavy action rod, and that 7.6, I, I can get that bait down there and make a really long cast. That's the key. But the bigger crankbaits, the ones that are so popular right now, this is a Strike King 8XD, there's also a 10XD, I throw it on a 7.10. It's critical to throw it on a bigger rod because you can, number one, you can make a really long cast. These crankbaits are not very effective if you can't make a long cast, so if you're not casting it very far, Try to figure out how to get your setup where you can throw it farther. You wanna really be able to cast this a long way. You get it way out there and it'll just get deeper every time. Now, as far as my line goes, I like Sunline Sniper. I like throwing fluorocarbon because I can get the bait deeper. The, the line's dense, it goes down through the water. Um, it depends. Typically, I'm gonna throw 14 or 16 pound test. I could throw 20, I could go down to 12, but 14 to 16 is kind of my go-to. As far as my reel goes, um, this is a Johnny Morris Platinum Signature Series. I like, now I'll throw that reel both in an 8.3 to one and a 6.8 to one, but when I'm cranking big deep crankbaits, I like a 6.8 to one. I just have every one of these setups got a 6.8 to one on it. it. It just feels right to me. It doesn't feel too fast. I love the 8.3 to one for lots of different techniques, but for this one, I actually like throwing it on a 6.8 to 1. And that's pretty much my setup. If you've got the, your rod and reel right, you can do some amazing things with a deep diving crankbait. <laughs> oh God, look at that. That, that is so awesome. <laughs> When you got them going in a school like that, I'm gonna take a picture of this. I'm not gonna unhook them yet. I mean, that's a five and that's probably almost four. We're gonna get a picture of this. <laughs> that's, pretty, that's pretty unbelievable right there. Hey, you gotta have strong hooks to do that because they're fighting against each other. I got a five, power full, five pounder pull in one way and a four pounder pull in the other. You know, when I'm throwing a deep diving crankbait, I really like a new hook. Owners come out with it about a year ago. It's an ST45. The ST45 is a Zowire hook. You've heard me talk a lot about Zowire. What is Zowire? It's stronger than typical steel. And so basically, when 
I know that that's going to be a double X strong hook just based on the fact that it's Zowire. This is actually a double X strong hook. This hook I'm going to put on here, this is a size three. I'm putting it on a five XD. And when I change it, one of the keys is, is having a good pair of split ring pliers. This is a pair of owner split ring pliers. If you've got the right set of split ring pliers, changing hooks is really pretty easy. Some of these split rings are really tough. It's hard to get in there and get it just right. But basically all you got to do is you open it up, get the hook started coming off. And when you're, when you're putting the new hook on, you know, some people, or I've seen people just take the hook all the way off. Well, don't do that. Just start the hook. And then you take the new hook. Let's see, I got to grab that guy. You take the new hook and just follow the old hook off. And then you only have to really do it one time. The new hook just, I mean, the old hook just fell off. There's the new hook and it's ready to go. This right here, these hooks right here will help you keep a lot more fish hooked. They're really strong. And you know, when you're deep cranking those fish being offshore like that, a lot of times they're wild. I mean, they'll fight and fight and fight and fight. You need good, strong hooks. More fishing action when Fishing and Hunting Texas returns. Groundbreaking designs, unsurpassed quality, and unshakable confidence. Welcome to the Ranger Z500 and Z100 series. Leading the industry for over 50 years, these rigs are custom crafted and loaded with more features and advantages to deliver the ultimate ownership experience. The legendary Ranger Z series, unleash next level performance. Evan Rudy e Tech, spend more time on the water. What are them sons of fishies up to now? Fellas, I give you the force trolling motor. It is the most powerful, the most efficient on the water. Yep. Most powerful. We're really in trouble now. And it's quiet, too. You can't swim here. What a dumb bass. <laughs> this portion of Fishing and Hunting Texas is brought to you by Strike King. Owner, perfection in hooks. Sawyer, we keep you outdoors. And by TH Marine. You know, when you're fishing offshore, one of the key things is, is to have a lot of rods rigged, a lot of baits ready to go. And you can, you know, say you're fishing a crankbait and they quit biting it. You need other baits to throw. Carolina rigs, one you can throw. Um, you, can, you can throw a big worm, you can throw a spoon, you can throw a swim bait. I mean, there's lots of different things, but one to consider that on a lot of deep ledges that I've gotten some extra bites on is a Strike King Tour Grade jointed structure head. Now, this bait right here is, is the, the, the bait that I've actually got on there is a Strike King Rage Bug. Now, the Rage Bug, it just seems like it fits it perfect. It looks just like a crawfish in the water. Now, the thing about this bait is, is people think, okay, yeah, I'm just gonna drag that thing out there. It's really not made to drag. It's made to be reeled. In other words, you get it out there, you gotta keep it on the bottom. If you stop reeling, when you're reeling this bait, if you stop reeling and the bait falls, well, then it's not on the bottom. You gotta be actually feeling the bottom. Rocky, gravelly kind of places is what I like to fish it in. It doesn't get hung in wood that much, but it's just not as effective. You want those kind of rocky places, any kind of like a shoal or something, you know, those hard places, shell beds that you think of. Look at that. Let me spit that shed up right there. Caught him on a jointed structure head. And, you know, they just kind of quit biting. We just wailed on him a little bit earlier on crankbait. Not right here, but just different places. And, shoot, I think they're just, they just change. You got to change baits a lot. Um, as far as your setup goes, I like throwing Sunline Sniper. I fish 20 pound test on there. I like a 6.8 to 1 on my gear, gear ratio on my reel, and I'm throwing a Johnny Morris Carbon Light 
I like a 7.3 medium heavy. You want something fairly heavy with some good backbone. The bite on this bait is really strange. When they bite it, it's like a, you know, you'll feel a little tick and then it'll just start to load up. I think the bass actually swims with you a lot of times. You kind of got to get used to it, but you wait until your rod loads up. Joining structure head with a rage bug can get you some big bites offshore. You know, I would not consider myself a finesse fisherman at all, but fishing a drop shot, it's something that I've learned to get better and better with because if you can ever find fish offshore on cover or just on a bar or wherever, you can see them on my Garmin live scope. When I'm looking out there and seeing them, this is usually the best way to catch them because basically what happens is, is you get the weight on the bottom or on a limb or on a tree and you're just basically sitting there and shaking the worm and the worm just just kind of shakes and it it gets a ton of bites. I want to talk a little bit about my setup. I almost always throw it on a spinning rod. I've got a Johnny Morris Platinum Signature Series um, spinning rod here. I like, my favorite's a seven to one. As far as my reel goes, same Johnny Morris Platinum Signature Series on the reel. This is a really smooth spinning reel. I, it's the best one I've ever had. The drag, a lot of times when I'll catch a fish, I've got my drag set right. It'll give just a little bit. Spinning rod, you're not using real heavy lines, so, so you want that, you, you want your drag to be really, really smooth when you're throwing a spinning presentation. Now, as far as line goes, line on a spinning rod has become so much easier over the years for me because I use braid. And either a 10, 12, or 15 pound braid, I've got Sunline Asagi on and it a is up it's a treated line it it's it feels really good to you when you, when you when you get it on there it'll be just a little stiff but as soon as you start using it it'll get really really limber and the as far as the line on this setup right here i've got 10 pound test now what i've done is is i've got my leader on here this right here is still braid my leader actually is right up here and so then i tie a uni knot on there to i've got 12 pound sunline sniper on there now as far as my setup goes there's two ways to drop shot if i'm drop shot in any kind of cover any place i'm going to get hung i'm going to use this is a cover shot hook made by owner this is a strike king dream shot i'm going to use the the cover shot if if i don't feel like i'm going to get hung any then I like an owner mosquito hook. There's the same bait. You can, you can do these. I mean, these are interchangeable to me. This one's in cover, this one's not in cover. So you just have to pick. I've got a 3 8 ounce down shot weight. And as far as the size of your weight goes when you're drop shotting, I mean, just what feels right. If you're, if you're fishing, you know, deep water, we'll go with something pretty heavy. If you're fishing shallow water, uh, with not much current, you can go with something pretty light. This is a 3 8 I'll use a quarter a lot, I'll use a half some, especially you get up around the Great Lakes, a half some, you got a ton of current, you might even need to go to a 3 quarter. So that's pretty much my drop shot setup. It, you don't have to be a genius to do it. You got Garmin Live Scope or your own traditional sonar, you see the fish, you drop down there, they're gonna be on small places. You're not trying to cover water with this technique. You're just dropping down and catching. Don't go anywhere. More fishing tips are coming your way when Fishing and Hunting Texas returns. When you spray on a layer of Sawyer's Permethrin Insect Repellent, you've just sprayed on adventure. Sawyer, we keep you outdoors. I got my power pole down, stuck in the mud in the bottom of the lake, sitting so still in the wind and the waves, could even be a hurricane. I got my power pole down. This portion of Fishing and Hunting Texas is brought to you in part by 
Engel Coolers, the original high-performance cooler. Sunline, the strength to guarantee your confidence. And by Outdoor Action. You know, one of those techniques that doesn't get talked about all that much anymore is a Carolina rig. When you're fishing offshore structure, I always have one rigged up. The reason is, is because it's just a subtle bait that'll get a lot of bites. Anytime that you can drag a Carolina rig out on gravelly or rocky or through brush piles, you got a chance to catch some good fish. And, you know, when you're, when you're thinking about a Carolina rig, you know, my setup is, it, it doesn't really matter that much. I've got a tour grade tungsten weight. I've got a, uh, a bead to protect my knot. I've got a barrel swivel, about a three and a half foot leader. I've got a, um, just, this is just a straight Strike King finesse worm. Um, the hook I'm using is an owner wide gap plus because it has a really good head on, it, on the hook right there so that that bait won't pull down very easily. And so, you know, it's a basic setup that you can throw out on any kind of flat place, any kind of place you get off the bank. As far as leader length goes, you know, some people go, now this one I said was three and a half, it might be a little bit longer than that. You can go as, I've heard of people going as long as six feet. I, some, three and a half is kind of my standard, three, three and a half. But sometimes I'll go shorter if I'm going to throw a lighter weight or I'm going to fish real kind of rocky stuff. Sometimes I'll go with, you know, only about a two foot leader. That's a pretty good fish right there. You know, my hook right here, I'm throwing a wide gap plus three aught on a straight worm, you know, straight Strike King finesse worm. It's a nice fish right there. And I like that hook because the bait doesn't slip down very easily at all. It will catch it. A Carolina rig, listen, it can get you a ton of bites. You get in a situation where all of a sudden you're not getting bit out on deep structure, pull out the Carolina rig. You know, fish care is one of those things we talk about all the time. It's incredibly important. Whatever you're doing, whether you're tournament fishing or whether you're not, here's a tip on how to pay attention to those fish. You know, as a tournament bass fisherman, fish care is critical. I want to keep the fish alive so I can put them back into the lake. Not only just so I can catch them again, but also so I don't lose any pounds and ounces in the tournament. Each tournament has a dead fish penalty. So what I've got is start with the Ranger live wells. I've got two aerator pumps in there that recirculate that water. I've also got a TH Marine oxygenator in there pumping oxygen into that water all the time. I use G-Juice. Now G-Juice actually is a live well treatment, tournament tested live well treatment that I put in there. It'll kind of turn the water a bluish green and it actually enhances the coat on, on each fish. And so you, that slimy coat that you want each fish to have, it enhances that, it lets it grow. And then as far as culling goes, TH Marine has just come out with a G-Force cull system and this is generation two. Basically when I put this clip in the fish's mouth, it won't come out, I'm not gonna lose it, and then I, oh, I don't even have to touch the fish. All I do is pick it up, I put each bead on there, and then, and then when I see which fish is heavier, I let the lighter one go, keep the heavier one. TH Marine and Ranger Boats has paired to keep those fish alive. It's critical. Hey, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Fishing and Hunting Texas. Probably one of the number one questions I get, you know, what line do I use? That's a big debate. For every tour out there, everybody's debating which line. I choose the simple side. My choice of line is Sunline. One of my favorite lines to use is Sunline. How all can you use it? Anywhere you want to. Anywhere there's water and bass, it's good. Walleye, catfish, trout, speckled trout, sharks.
There we go. Uh, I don't say this unless I think it's true, but honestly, it's the best in the market. 